How's it going everyone? It's Javi from Mother Sponge 5000 and I hope you guys are having a great day as in this video. Of course, we're going to talk more about Tropical Storm Philippe which is now likely to impact the United States as well as the Atlantic Canada region with gusty winds as well as heavy rainfall which could be a problem for some areas in the northeast because of course we've been seeing a multitude of rainstorms and even um, partially from Tropical Storm Franklin and Ophelia the northeast is very saturated which means that we're more likely to see flooding um if we were to see any more rain events such as philippe so we're definitely going to talk more about that in this video we're also going to talk about the possibility of tropical storm sean developing either in the main development region or in right around the southern gulf of mexico and the western caribbean because if we were to take a look at the climate prediction center's forecast right now the global tropics hazards outlook the Climate Prediction Center has raised the possibility of tropical cyclone development in the more long-term future for the week ending October 14th because if we were to see um, during the week ending October 17th, while the chance certainly does exist, the stripe pattern you see uh, means that the chance is certainly lower. But if we were to take a look at the, October, the week ending October 24th, it changes where now we see a solid red color, which represents a higher possibility of tropical cyclone development. And this extends into the Eastern Pacific as well. So we're going to focus on that in this video and we're definitely gonna need to pay close attention right around the southern gulf of mexico and the western caribbean over the next few days in terms of the forecast in the short term future however provided from the national hurricane center we do see that of course there's tropical storm philippe is very weak right now maximum sustained winds of 40 miles per hour with its central millibar pressure hovering around 1004 millibars and it's moving north at around an average speed at 12 miles per hour but i'll go more in detail with philippe in just a second but into um but showing you guys this newly um, um newly um outlined area from the national hurricane center we do see that there is at least a possibility of tropical cyclone development in the more long-term future between the next two to seven days where now the national hurricane center has at least acknowledged this area of having a low 20 percent chance of developing however i definitely wouldn't be surprised if this chance um continues to rise as we head more and more into the long-term future because um, one of the most reliable computer models, the GFS model, has been very persistent on developing a tropical storm and potentially a hurricane in this area. So if the National Hurricane Center continues to see that the computer models persist on this over the next few days, expect this chance to rise. This chance is far from final when it comes to the possibility of tropical cyclone development because this is still more in the long-term future the tropical wave hasn't even um hasn't even moved off the west african coast yet so there's still a lot of time for the chance to potentially rise if the computer models continue to persist on that idea of a tropical storm developing now, focusing back on Tropical Storm Philippe, taking a look at the water vapor imagery, you could clearly tell it's struggling um, very um, hard right now. We're seeing that the wind shear is quite strong. All the clouds are drifting towards one direction. There's almost a non-visible amount of rotation around this storm system. We do see a slight amount right here, but it's just under a highly sheared environment right now there is just enough convective activity going on to where the wind speed at least along the eastern side is still strong enough to be considered a tropical storm but it's a very weak tropical storm at this point and in fact the upper level the stronger upper level winds are the only thing that's keeping this storm system afloat right now the decent amount of instability we're seeing because if it weren't for that then this would have been long dissipated at this point but the strong wind shear is helping the winds on the eastern side which is the reason why there's still at least considered a tropical storm when it comes to wind speed but you could clearly see it struggling and it's a quick struggle over the next several days until it reaches a latitude that's a little bit further northward to um to the point where it um it'll encounter a little bit more instability to increase the wind speed as well as the rotation around that um the storm system but at that point it likely won't be considered a tropical entity but still something to keep in mind right around the uh, um right around the northeast as well as the atlantic canada coast 
Taking a look at the latest run of the European model, if we were to continue to move forward with the forecast, the European model was pretty accurate when it comes to Tropical Storm Philippe's strength at this point. Uh, European model also forecasted that the the um the storm would struggle as it, at least um early on because of the strong wind shear and plus there is a decent amount of dry air just to the west of it however that will change because like i said there is an upper level low located just to the west of tropical storm philippe that's expected to converge with tropical storm philippe and enhance some moisture along the western side which will allow the storm to have a little bit more convective activity a little bit more lift on the western side to the point where it'll strengthen a little bit more or at least maintain its strength but uh, but once this trough that's going to move through the, the east coast by the time we approach a saturday time frame moves through that's when we should see the storm intensify quite a bit thanks to the instability that this trough will um will um supply towards this storm system because there is plenty of cold air behind this mid latitude low and that cold air will entrain the very tropical warm um um center of circulation and i'll create enough instability to enhance the wind speed enhance the convective activity and of course lower the pressure along the surface as the european model does expect quite a strong storm to make landfall right around atlantic canada so this is definitely something we're gonna need to keep in mind oh by the way this is a um this run is a bit outdated let me show you guys the 12z run um so um so don't um take the last run um very seriously this is the latest run i do apologize i showed you guys the run that was on the second but this is the latest run and the european model unfortunately expects a strong an even stronger storm than its prior run where we see a 979 millibar storm system make landfall anywhere between the border of maine and canada so in terms of millibar pressure this would be considered hurricane strength it likely won't have the wind speed of um of let's say a hurt a category one hurricane mainly due to the fact that um since it's going to be an extra tropical storm at this point the wind field will be a little bit too large for the energy to focus in on one area and enhance the max wind speed however impact should feel a lot like a category one hurricane in a lot of these areas such as atlantic canada and maine thanks to a large wind field and how long of a uh, duration of strong winds you're going to experience in those areas and the stronger wind gusts could extend even a little bit further southwestward into new england and potentially even portions of the mid-atlantic new york city might be a little bit windier on sunday thanks to this storm system so it should be a pretty strong storm expect very heavy rainfall mainly around maine the good news is that in the hardest hit areas from rainfall over the past several days such as new york city of course just a few days ago you've experienced some of the worst flooding in the city's history thankfully the um the storm system is expected to move um far east enough to where the worst of the rain wouldn't impact new york city but you still should expect maybe around an inch in new york city and uh, and adding that on top of already oversaturated soil could cause some localized flooding in some areas and this extends into new england as well the worst of the flooding should be right over maine and atlantic canada where you could experience anywhere from three to five inches of rain so you want to be aware of that wind gusts i'll say are um could occasionally gust over 50 miles per hour right around maine and canada potentially 60 along the coast so you want to be aware of that as well and be aware of rough surf as well and potentially coastal flooding especially on the eastern half of this storm where the winds will pretty much blow straight along the coast so make sure to be aware of that throughout atlantic canada and maine as is quite rare to see this is a very similar trajectory as what hurricane franklin took just a few weeks ago where it made landfall just to the um, east of maine and it seems like this storm system will take a very similar track and this track is certain at this point um the computer models have honed in that this um the ridging just to the east of this storm system will be strong enough to steer this towards the united states can the and canadian coast so you should be preparing for impacts right over maine and atlantic canada and be aware of the possibility of flooding over other areas of new england as well taking a look at the forecasted 500 millibar height anomaly this is where philippe is and you're going to see philippe will begin to rapidly intensify once it encounters this very 
cold core trough that will allow this storm to um, tap into more instability and strengthen this storm quite a bit as we sort of see a negative tilt with the jet stream which which um, is a good representation that there's a strong amount of instability that'll create that'll just continue to intensify the storm the ridging of course you see is strong enough this trough is strong enough to steer this out to sea so unfortunately this is expected to make landfall anywhere between atlantic canada and maine so make sure to prepare for impacts right up along the coast now shifting our focus to our next potential tropical cyclones that could develop so take a look at the gulf of mexico we've been talking to you guys about the possibility of a tropical cyclone developing anywhere between the western caribbean and the gulf of mexico since there's been plenty of convective activity that's been moving through central america and combining that with a much warmer than average sea surf temperature we're seeing over this area i definitely would wouldn't be surprised that by mid October or late October, we could see um, a, a tropical storm develop anywhere um, between th um, these areas. And we do see that on the tail end of this trough moving through the East Coast, there will be a decent amount of moisture surrounding it. And there's going to be just enough of weakness and ridging as well, right over Central America and into the Gulf of Mexico, that we should see a lot of this moisture located in South America get pulled up. And I definitely wouldn't be surprised if um is um if we see um one of these areas of convective activity have a little bit more convection and potentially have the possibility of developing into our next tropical storm and we're um and the gfs model is also expecting an eastern pacific hurricane could de um to develop so depending on if um this storm system um makes landfall right along metsco or not and moves eastward that could be a key determinant um, um, in terms of maybe developing a tropical storm right over the Gulf of Mexico. The good news is that the wind shear is expected to be quite strong, but like I said in my previous videos, just because you see a strong amount of wind shear does not completely um, diminish the chance of tropical cyclone development or at least um, a low pressure system de um, developing in a manner that's very similar to a tropical entity because we still could see an extra tropical low or a subtropical low become quite strong even if it's not fully tropical despite the strong wind shear so we're gonna need to keep in mind see how much instability there will be but the wind shear will certainly help in diminishing the chance at least in the near future for tropical cyclones what we do see there could be a small area by the time we approach mid-october where the wind shear does become quite light the gfs model does develop a small low pressure system right over central america so this could be the opportunity where we would see tropical cyclone development and taking a look at the humidity there is going to be quite a bit of convective activity moving into the gulf of mexico and the western caribbean and at um to show you guys the 500 millibar height anomaly the reason why i'm concerned is that look at this weakness and ridging we're seeing right over the caribbean and gulf of mexico this is an open area to where any um, um, all this convective activity located over South America would be able to move upwards and over the very warm um, Gulf of Mexico waters. So we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to any changes. The good news is that the GFS model isn't developing anything definitive just yet, but don't be surprised if we do see changes. The European model is also suggesting the same thing. However, moving our focus towards the main development region, we do see the GFS model in the more long-term future does develop a uh, uh, tropical storm and in fact does strengthen it into hurricane status where we see uh the pressure drop down to 983 millibars right over the main development region the good news is is that in this scenario the gfs model steer this um steers this storm system out to sea and at this point based on how much troughing that's expected over the north atlantic over the next several days thanks to a negative north atlantic oscillation um we're experiencing right now i do expect that if we were to see a storm system develop in the main development region it'll likely move northward thanks to the sheer or at least a lack thereof um, um of wind of um ridging that's going to be located just to the north of this storm system showing you guys 
the 500 millibar height anomaly we do see not a lot of ridging just to the north of this as troughing is just dominating the mid latitudes at this time so this storm would have an open area to move northward um but the european model is showing it an even better scenario where the european model doesn't even want to develop it at all i'm taking a look at the relative humidity map from the european model um let me show you guys the long-term future with the 12z run um so what the 12z run is suggesting is that there will be a decent amount of convective activity surrounding this tropical wave but it should fizzle out thanks to the amount of dry air just to the north of it um which isn't typical um which is typical during the month of october it's very rare um for any tropical wave to have a good chance of developing over the main development region um so the european model might i'll say may be the slightly more correct model in this scenario at least historically speaking but we can't disregard the gfs model either so i'll keep you guys updated um really all depends on how much moisture will be surrounding it how much dry air just in the north of it um which is still has yet to be seen but the good news is that both of them want to take this out to sea and i think that's the most likely scenario i wouldn't rule out that maybe this moves westward towards the caribbean but i'll say it's less likely at this point and here's a projected path from the National Hurricane Center. This will at least maintain tropical storm status. It might strengthen a little bit, I'll say past Friday time frame to close to um, borderline hurricane status, but I don't expect it to reach hurricane status, mainly due to the fact that the wind field will be so large, the energy will be too spread out to be concentrated um, right around the center circulation for the max wind speed to be that strong, but you still should expect pretty strong impacts when it comes to heavy rainfall and gusty winds right over Maine and Canada, as well as Bermuda, where a tropical storm warning is issued. When it comes to what the ensemble members are stating, it's pretty much what you'd expect with Tropical Storm Philippe, expect shutting a little bit later. However, I want to point this out because even though the European model, at least the main um, European model, isn't forecasting a Tropical Storm to develop in the main development region, some of the ensemble members do say otherwise, which is the reason why I do expect the chance for a Tropical Cyclone development to rise right over the uh, main development region um because they um both of the computer models at least acknowledge that there is going to be a stronger tropical wave moving in that will have a decent amount of moisture won't have a ton of wind shear so a tropical storm is certainly possible over the main development region despite the european the main european model not showing a high amount of confidence in that because we do have some ensemble members at least acknowledging that idea and same goes for this potential tropical cyclone right here over the southern gulf of mexico so definitely pay close attention to this i'll keep you guys updated and as you can see the gfs ensemble members are forecasting much of the same thing as well with philippe potential tropical storm um sean as well as our next potential tropical cyclone or or the one after tropical storm sean um right over the southern um gulf of mexico and here's the amount of rainfall you should expect in the northeast as tropical storm Philippe makes landfall. What will likely be um, it will likely become extra tropical at landfall, but it'll still bring tropical storm like impacts. Where if you're in the red, you should expect anywhere from three to five inches of rain. The um, the lighter blues and purples, you should expect anywhere from two to three inches of rain. So this is bringing a heavy amount of rain, especially in the higher elevation. So um, in the areas a lot more vulnerable to flash flooding. So you want to be aware of that possibility if you live in the higher elevations of the northeast. And in fact. You could even see some snowfall in the Adirondacks and in the higher elevations of Vermont. So it's definitely something to look forward to if you're looking for early season snow. There's going to be quite a bit of cold air behind this trough. And the strong winds associated with Philippe will only enhance the northwesterly flow to bring that cold air for a southward. So snow is certainly possible in the higher elevations. Not a ton but it is but there you could see maybe some flakes falling in those areas but that's it for now guys uh thank you guys for watching